We've got the 8 inch petrol powered pole saw from Troy Bill. This is the Troy Built TB25PS. TB stands for Troy Built 25 for the 25cc engine and the PS for pole saw. Now, not only do we get the pole saw extension, but we also get an extension to the extension, uh, 26 more inches, if you will. Uh, we get everything you see here. Before I say too much more, let's just dive in, take a closer look at all these details. Then we'll start this thing up, we'll take it out cut some limbs, and then we'll come back and talk about what we think of it, as well as pricing and warranty. This is the Troy Built TB25PS. Uh, it's the 25cc gas-powered pole saw. Specifically, it is uh, two-stroke or two-cycle, so it is going to require two-cycle oil mixed with fuel at a 40 to 1 ratio. Comes with this little pack here that's ready to put uh, this 3.2 ounces into a full gallon of fuel to have the proper mix ratios. You also get bar and chain oil. So we definitely need that. When we look at the business end of this pole saw, we'll see we have a tank for the bar and chain. Uh, and by the way, when you get this kit, basically everything you see here is what comes in the box. Well, with the manual, uh, this little Allen wrench, and uh, even this strap here, and all of these things come in the box. Now, be sure that you don't throw this away. This kind of looks like it may be some type of cover that's in there for packaging kind of like these are, uh, but where these you can take and, and throw them away, this one, do not throw that away. We'll cover that here in just one moment. Now we have done nothing with this other than take it out of the box, place it here on the workbench as you can see it. Of course, we've laid some eyes on it to kind of get an idea of what we're gonna do here. But I think first what we'll do is just kind of walk through what we have, take some measurements, uh, take some weights to give you an idea how much this thing weighs, how long it is, our, our different uh, features and our different extensions and that sort of thing. Uh, then we'll actually do our first startup right here on the bench. And again, we haven't pulled the string not once on this. So we'll give you kind of the true feel of how easy this thing's going to be to start out of the box. So first off, we have the power head. This is the 25cc engine uh, with the throttle here, the handle, and then obviously a place for attachment. Now, this is not only going to power the pole saw. You can also get things like your edgers, your string trimmers, uh, even blowers to be able to run off this same power head. So save you a little money just by your different attachments. Uh, also, we get uh, the 8-inch pole saw here, so we have an 8-inch bar and chain, and we'll cover that in more detail here in one moment. Uh, but as far as the extension here, let's just get a measurement, and uh, it looks like for the extension part up to the tip of the saw, you're adding about 43 inches, and uh, the unit itself from the back of the saw or back of the motor to the front edge is about 37 inches. But once you couple these together, obviously we're gonna lose a little bit of uh, length there. So you're probably gonna add about 41 inches to that once we connect it. And we'll get another measurement here in a few moments, but just kind of giving you an idea. Now, this is uh, sort of an intermediate shaft, if you will. So if you just couple these two together, you can obviously use it that way. But if you need a little more length, I believe this is like 26 inches, that's going to add two more feet to your reach. You also get the, this hanger, which I mentioned, don't throw this away. This will actually clip onto the end there to be able to hang these tools up as you need to. And then we also get the barn chain oil and the two cycle oil as well. We also get this strap right here. Now this strap is gonna be very handy, especially the higher you reach, the more it's nice to be able to kind of, you know, offset some of that weight onto your shoulders and not just holding it in your hands. And let me go over something really quick. I know this seems kind of elementary, but I see straps that come like this that don't come already kind of pre-looped um, into the harness that people kind of do these wrong and kind of they, they usually overcomplicate this and try to route this 48 different ways. This is very easy. So you take the loose end, make sure it's all straight. So you can just kind of come down here and then you're just going to come up through this one. You don't have to worry about this gap here, just up through this one and back down through this one. And that's all. So what that's going to enable you to do, number one, it's going to be nice and strong. It's not going to pull away. But if you need to shorten it up, you just grab this tab, pull it, that's going to shorten it up. And now if you need to loosen it, you can't just pull it that way. But if you take this tab and pull it like that, it's going to loosen it. So if you pull that through the right way, it will not be complicated to lengthen and shorten that harness. 
and then this clip is going to clip right there on the shaft. Move that aside. Now we'll go over the start details here in just one moment, but let's take a look at what we get on the business end of this pole saw. Now when you get this unit, it will have the cover on the chain, and before you take that off, make sure that you don't have any power hooked to it so it's, there's no chance of it coming on. And then also you want to be very careful because sometimes it will grab onto the teeth and you kind of got to jerk this off. But make sure you're not getting your hand anywhere near, near these blades, especially the new ones are going to get you pretty good. You can see where it's kind of tearing the plastic out of the inside of this and that's common on any on any guard uh, blade guard on a chainsaw so be very careful around that chain even when it's not running obviously now just to show you this is an eight inch bar and chain so as far as the cutting area you get about seven inches uh, to use for cutting now be careful because when you're cutting on the top side here anywhere say right in here that's kind of your kickback points in other words if you try to cut something underneath which there sometimes you need to do that you get it near the tip it's going to try to kick that out now that's not as detrimental as when you're you know holding a small saw in your hand but still you don't want this overhead and kicking back and and uh, kind of throwing you off balance so be careful with that now some tools that you will need uh, will be a flat blade screwdriver um, or standard screwdriver a t20 or torx uh, 20 and a 13 millimeter or half inch socket and ratchet a wrench will be fine too but anyway, so these are these two are half inch or 13 millimeter nuts. And so let's go ahead and take these off. And then uh, you'll have a T20 right here that has to be removed as well. And now this cover will just come straight off. And by the way, these are your bar retention bolts. So this is what keeps this bar tight. And then if you see this little hole right here and uh, that little thing that's in there, that's actually what's putting tension on this uh, bar and chain. And so there's a screw on the front side here. You turn this over. There's a screw right there. And then if you turn that, it puts tension on it. And if you loosen it, it releases the tension on it. So I'm gonna loosen it a few turns. And now this will come off. I wanted to show this to you because I thought this was uh, a good thing. So we have an eight inch bar and chain and it's a very common bar and chain. If you look back here, it's actually an organ bar and chain and tells you which chain to use as well as which bar this is. Uh, so basically, very standardized bar and chain. Organ makes uh, bars and chains for all types of chainsaws that you can think of. So you should be able to find this in common places. It's not very specific where you're going to be left in the dust, you know, when this thing wears out. And by the way, just understand this. After several times using this, be very careful. Take this off and flip it over it's made to be used from both sides because this hole here and this hole here one of them will be used for tensioning and the other one is used for oiling so that little passage right there is where the oil comes out of the tank to oil this bar and chain and it goes inside here and actually lubricates down the channel in this and the chain carries that oil all the way around so again after every few uses make sure you turn that over and I get use out of both sides of the bar so it doesn't just wear out one side. Now get these nuts on here snug, but not tight. And you should, still should be able to move that bar just a little bit. Okay, so normally when I would tighten a chainsaw chain, I would tighten it until you know I could get about, about that much where I could see where I could pull on the chain and see kind of the top of the bottom uh, tooth or the guide tooth. But on a short bar like this, that's really not, a, not enough. That will loosen up really quickly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this screw. Gonna tighten this until I've got some just good tension on that chain where I really can't pull much on it. That's good right there. So with a decent tug, I can kind of see a gap, but not much. And now I can, tighten up these nuts so get those nice and tight and so our chain should be ready to go now not too much tension but just enough where we can see a little gap there now before we take this out we will fill up this oil tank but we'll wait till we're ready to go before we do that and while we're on the chain topic when you get uh, the troy built kit you'll get a little allen wrench right here which is a 330 seconds and it it will be used where you can actually adjust 
the oil flow. So go right through this hole right here and you can actually just turn to the right to create less oil. To the left is gonna create more oil that dumps out onto the chain. Now let's fuel this up and get it started. But before we do, let's get an idea of how much this guy's gonna weigh. Right at nine pounds for the power head. And let's go ahead and add the saw with it. So it looks like about 13 pounds with the saw and the power head. Now, before we do anything, we want to make sure we have the properly mixed fuel. Now, I keep a gallon jug like you see here of mixed fuel. And the reason I keep a one gallon container is because it makes it very easy when I need to refill it that I just get a 3.2 ounce container, dump it in there, put my gallon of fuel in. The uh, fuel that's going in helps mix the, the oil that's in there. And I know I need to add a gallon and that's going to give me the proper mixture. And it's always going to have the proper mixture rather than kind of guessing. Uh, now they send this. It's a semi-synthetic two-cycle engine oil that you can use. Again, I've got some mixed already, so I don't need to worry about that. But definitely use this to get the proper mix. Now, our instructions are plain as day right here on the unit. You don't have to open up a manual or anything right there. Easy to follow in which we will do. But first, you see we got no fuel in here. All right. That shouldn't leak, should be fine. So now let's follow these instructions. So first it says, press the primer bulb 10 times. So the primer bulb's right here in the back. So right here, we should see this go from being clear to filling up with fuel here in a moment. Seven, eight, nine, 10. So you see now our primer bulb has mostly fuel, full of fuel. And so what that's done is pulled fuel out of the tank and now it's primed the carburetor. And so now second thing to do is to flip this lever, which is the choke. So we need to close the choke. So now that closes the choke. And then it says, do not squeeze the throttle. So don't grab the throttle. That's old school stuff when you're trying to grab the throttle and start this. The choke is fully on. When we crank it, it should crank up. And then it says, wait 30 seconds and then squeeze the throttle. Now it's gonna do a couple of things. And I'll show you here before we start it up. So once it warms up, it should be in kind of a high idle. It's not a low idle, it's kind of higher than normal. And then once it warms up, watch what happens to this lever when all I do is pull the throttle. First, I have to push down the throttle lock and then pull this and that automatically clicks off. So as soon as we grab the throttle, it's gonna turn that choke off. So we don't have to worry about turning off that choke. Also the start button on this auto returns to on. So we have to hold it to turn it off, but once we release, it's back to on. So we don't have to flip anything on to start this. It's always ready to start. We just have to press the button when we wanna stop it. Okay, so we've primed it, we've choked it. Now it's time to pull this. There's one. Two, three, four, Okay, so what we had was a completely dry carburetor. I had to press the primer bulb uh, like three more times and that pumped more fuel into the carburetor. That's because it was brand new. So I would say when it's brand new, maybe give a couple of extra pumps. You'll feel it once it gets firm and then you may have to pull it, you know, four or five or six times to get it started for the first time. But now without the choke, I can just pull. And again, you see where I'm having to stop it, but once I let go, I can just go back. So very easy to start once fuel gets to the carburetor. Now, before we get started, we need to make sure that we've got barn chain oil. 
in our tank. So we take the bar and chain oil, pretty self-explanatory. Translucent tank so we can see the level of the oil. And then on the pole saw attachment, we're gonna take the little red cap off. We're gonna line up the little push button right here where we have this kind of indention that pokes out. Lock the little push button in the hole, and then we'll crank down on the thumb screw. Tighten that down. Now we're ready to go. Now we haven't started this since we had it on the workbench and that's been uh, quite a while. So it's nice and cooled off now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to start it without choking it. We are here in Florida, stays pretty warm. So we'll just see, we'll give it one pull. Nope, it's not gonna start. So I'm just going to give a couple of pumps of the bulb, turn the choke on, pull it one more time. Take our blade up cover off. So we're going to use it first with just the pole saw attachment and not the intermediate shaft in there as well and make a few cuts then we'll come back and add that extension. Okay, so now we're going to add the intermediate shaft. So now we've added a couple of more feet of reach to our saw. So we've got our extension on. Let's crank it back up. Now you can also, if I want to, I can loosen this up and I can actually turn this 90 degrees to where the button's out this hole. And now that allows me to kind of do almost a lateral cut, if you will, like in this case on this limb up here. I can come across on it and my head unit's still in the correct orientation. Now this is definitely pushing the limits of what this saw to be cutting, but I was just going to show you because I think they recommend uh, four inch and smaller, probably getting into six inch. Uh... This little Troy Belt 25cc saw worked out really well. Now let's talk about the actual length that you get when using the saw. So when just using the power head, connecting to the regular pole saw extension, we measured from like two inches from the tip of the saw blade, so kind of the meat of the saw blade, to the actual handle here, and that was right at five feet. Now when you add the extension to that, basically you add two more feet. So we got a seven foot span, again, about two inches off the tip of the blade and the meat of the saw blade to the handle, we got seven feet. So 
you can basically add seven feet or five feet to wherever you're going to comfortably this. Now I will tell you it didn't bother me at all to handle this saw without the lanyard on it. So I didn't have to hang it on my shoulders where if you did that would probably be somewhere sitting around your waist as far as the power head. So you're going to get less of an extension when that handle is down closer to the ground. Now in my case I could actually get that around shoulder level very comfortably with either just the saw on it or with the extension in it as well. So I'm getting a further reach at say, you know, five feet off the ground. I'm six foot two, so I'm sure I was somewhere around five feet off the ground. So five plus seven, I'm getting a good 12 foot reach from the ground to be able to cut those limbs. Now cutting four inch and smaller limbs, no problem whatsoever. Did I cut some five and six inch stuff? Yes. Did it cut it comfortably? It did it decently, but I think they're right range when Troy Built says this is meant for four inch and smaller limbs and let's just face it with a pole saw you really don't want to be dropping huge limbs like this and all that weight overhead without the proper equipment so using a pole saw like this I would say definitely stay in that four inch and smaller limbs which is pretty typical when you're cutting that stuff from the ground and from a pole saw if you saw it took i think six or seven pulls to initially start it up but i think if i would have just pumped the bulb a few more times getting that fuel from uh, the tank all the way up to the carburetor it would have started no problem at all but after that it was literally single pulls after that except i think the one cold start it took two pulls to start but after after it was warmed up literally first pull and it's not tough to pull at all very easy pull on this it cranked up right away hey check it out for yourselves it's the tb 25 ps now price on this is going to be right over the 200 dollars range i've seen it for 219 i've also seen it for 239 but definitely under 250 bucks and that comes with everything you see here comes with the kit with the pole saw as well as the 26 inch extension which you can chalk that up to be in two feet. Anyway, you get the whole kit for that price. You don't have to come back and buy this. And then, as I mentioned, you can also add those attachments as you want to, like your string trimmer head, your edger blade, uh, even a blower if you want to go that route with having a blower at the end of this. So you can definitely add other attachments to this same power head without having to purchase this again. Be sure to keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.